It's really a pleasure to be here today, and it's also a pleasure to be able to participate in this Young Leaders Forum. Uh, I was really pleased when Admiral Griggs uh, told me about this forum, and then uh, when he also allowed me to participate actively, uh, I, I was really uh, thrilled by that because I think as we do these kinds of sea power conferences, the National Fleet Review, et cetera, it's good to also talk about one of my favorite subjects, which I'll focus on here, is it's about leadership. And uh, I've just got about six or so slides here that I'll, I'll put up only to amuse you, but it's a little bit of a bad example because uh, what I tell most young officers is you can have a conversation without PowerPoint or electronic device or what have you, and to exercise that piece. As you look at this picture, uh, you see part of Talisman Saber, and you see the word R up there, O-U-R. And you might say, oh, is that R-U-S? No, it's R collectively here uh, in the navies that are represented here in this audience. Uh, and I think that piece is important. You, each of you, are part of the R when it comes to addressing the issues in the maritime domain, maritime security, and what have you. Uh, in this slide, you look at it and you might get the impression I'm going to talk about weaponry. Uh, but quite frankly, uh, when I talk here, one of the things I'm going to talk about is the, the essence of any weapons system is, quite frankly, the people that operate it and the people that lead it. So consequently, uh, that's why I think it's, it's so important to, to add this type of vignette uh, to the forum. Uh, we in the, in the United States can develop some great wizardry e equipment, but it's usually the sailors that are able to figure out how to operate it better. And quite frankly, when we do our best designs, usually we incorporate that type of uh, thinking in the beginning. Is one initiative that we have going on right now with our uh, Naval Warfare Development Center uh, in terms of getting uh, small groups of young, young lieutenants in general, lieutenant commander at the most senior, to be able to think outside the box and bring some of those ideas to the table, whether we're talking about uh, black boxes, machinery, or what I'm most interested in is new thinking in terms of tactics, techniques, procedures, operational concepts, and those kinds of things. Today, as I look at the world and as it spins, uh, I really tell you, you have to be much better at your level than I had to be because uh, the number of threats and things on your plate have grown immensely uh, than when I started off as a lieutenant, as an instant lieutenant, JG lieutenant. Uh, and, and I'm mindful of that. You have to be better at more integrated operations. You have to be better at more joint operations, more combined operations. And then as we look across that spectrum of the range of, uh, of military operations, those options that we provide our uh, national security op, uh, apparatus, regardless of which country you're in, uh, they span uh, uh, the gamut. Uh, everything, as we frequently talk about, from humanitarian assistance, disaster relief, all the way over to uh, dealing in that high end uh, to be able to project power. And then in between all that, uh, hopefully the efforts, our combined efforts, are able to deter. But we can't just bet on that. If deterrence fails, we have to be able to uh, have our war fighting readiness where it needs to be. So thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I'm going to talk about a couple key things here briefly. One is how important it is to understand the environment, the business of collaboration, and events like you've been involved in here uh, can't say enough about in terms of building trust and confidence. Uh, you know, I look at it, and sometimes even within one Navy, the business of the different branches, aviation, submarine, surface, et cetera. Well, there's got to be collaboration and trust generated there, and then it goes beyond that as we look at working with other nations. 
uh, and particularly through multilateral experiences. I think I'm in charge of this slide thing, so let's see if it works. Ah, excellent. But they don't give me too much to operate with, so I always enjoy when I have something I can play with. The, uh, this slide here has a few words uh, on it, but what I really like to pound on the table about is uh, how you have to understand the environment as a leader <coughs> in today's world uh, and just how darn important that is. Frequently in our internet connected world, uh, we love quick answers. In the zillions of cable TV channels, we like to be able to quickly flip from one to the other. This business that we're in, uh, in this very complex world, requires in-depth study, in-depth understanding of that environment when you look at the list of complexities that I have listed there. And those are just a very small sampling of both man-made and uh, mother nature type of, of things we get paid uh, to respond to. So this deep understanding involves us understanding economically uh, the situations associated with the region, the countries you're working with, and what have you, the cultural piece, the history, and of course the politics before you can even think of having a military solution to uh, X, Y, or Z. Very important. And also, frequently in a forum like this, but maybe I should ask this forum, how many of you consider yourself to be cyber warriors? Show of hands. Remarkably, I get the same kind of, I got one over there, same kind of thing, even if it's a U.S. only uh, naval officer form that I'm talking to, or naval officer in enlisted form. And I asked him again, I said, well, don't you touch the keyboard periodically uh, in associated with your day-to-day -day work? Uh, maybe it's a fire control system keyboard. Uh, maybe it's an engineering plant keyboard. But it's amazing the amounts of ones and zeros that make our apparatus work today, whether you're down under or whether you're up in the, uh, at, at altitude. And that consequently, all of us have to have a basic understanding of this cyber world we're in, because guess what? When I look at the threats that are out there, including on the maritime domain, this one connects to the maritime domain, so it's very important that uh, we not take that for granted that somebody else is covering it. So when your electronic apparatus isn't working so well, is it really the software or is somebody else uh, into the beast? And uh, so I encourage folks at all ages to understand this cyber domain as best you can because you will use it more than I will use it, quite frankly, uh, in my remaining years of a career. And I'll tell you, I spend a lot of time thinking and questioning our efforts in that world. All important as you look at this business of our ability to be interoperable and also to be effective partners as we deal with this uncertain world we live in. Working together is an important part of this and learning from each other. As we look at uh, the range of options in that arrow that I talked a little bit about and then what we have been doing collectively uh, through a set of whether it's bilateral uh, type of exercises and operations or multilateral. Uh, very important to take each one of those and say hmm, I'm going to expand my horizon a little bit more than that four, six, eight hour watch to learn as much as I can uh, for the uh, fuel that we're expending associated with that particular evolution. So I encourage whether you're participating in a carrot type exercise or a multi-lat like Rim of the Pacific or this uh, exercise we did earlier here, the IFR uh, uh, field training exercise, uh, 
learn everything you can and learn by questioning as much as you can associate it with uh, why did that work, why didn't that work, uh, associate it with things, and then question it not just within your own people you're comfortable with, but other people, and particularly when you have a chance, uh, why I enjoy these types of international forums is so that I can grab people from other nations, other navies, and ask them about their approach and how they view some of our approaches. One of my favorite uh, items here, you see the hospital ship that's portraying Pacific Partnership, which quite frankly, uh, we have done uh, uh, for some years now, hand in hand with the nations in this particular part of the region. And I can't say enough about that. Canterbury from New Zealand and Trubuck, Trubrook, uh, I was glad to see them out marching today, thinking about all the efforts they did in Pacific Partnership uh, 2013 but also uh, to the Japanese uh, ship that was out there marching, uh, thinking about my tour of Usumi off Vietnam in Pacific Partnership 2012. This gives us, when we operate together, dwell time together. And, and, and my encouragement to you is take advantage of that dwell time to really get to know and understand and question uh, because you never know when you will use it again. If you had asked me at some of your ages in this room that I would be standing before you as the uh, Pacific Fleet Commander, uh, I would have asked you what drugs you were on. But uh, so I, I tell you, learn as you go as much as you can because you never know when you're going to have to pay some of that back. Professional development is learning together. In one of these pictures here, or the CCAT exercise, we actually have our littoral combat ship, which we've been experimenting with, uh, with other nations that were involved in that, uh, involving uh, boarding and security team work. Uh, and it was just great to, to have the teamwork there. And this slide here I overuse a lot because, as I mentioned, this requires study. As a four-star admiral, and you can ask my staff, I probably exceed most of you in this room in how much homework I do per night. Homework, and not just something that's due to the chief of naval operations or my operational boss, of uh, things to continue to refresh, to review, to learn. So this requires reading, reading, and more reading, and not just surface surfing topics on the internet. Yep, I use the internet when I come across something. I said, well, crap, I don't know enough about that. Let me uh, flip through and get a quick burst so that I can integrate it into what I'm reading about. So I can't say enough about that. When you look at rebalance, which, you know, was our United States uh, government's approach, President Obama put out back in the beginning of 2012, but it was something we've been working on for a while. The piece that excites me the most isn't the bright, shiny objects. It's really about the whole of government approach to learning and understanding the Indo-Western Pacific region in a much more in-depth way, including the work with our Navy, and consequently uh, proud of some of the efforts we have done there to improve programs like our Foreign Area Officer Program. But I would ask you, how can we improve further in, in this area. And I would ask you, as you see some of my Pacific Fleet sailors, to help them to understand more about your nations, your Navy, your approaches. When you look at Australia, for example, and dealing with this complexity of refugees, that's hard stuff. And consequently, that's the kind of things that you might be able to share your approaches that we will benefit from uh, in this uncertain future. But I also uh, believe, and I'll move on to the next slide here, that it is important that you keep growing. You know, when you look at being future leaders, to me, it's not just in the Navy, in the military, but also understanding the governmental processes, the business processes, and leveraging off academia and in some cases industry to help with that journey. So when you have different shore postings and what have you, 
leverage on those because again, we live in an uncertain world even though we work hard with our intelligence apparatus. But I'm reminded every day in Pearl Harbor when I look at the, the battleship memorial for Arizona of how we don't get that right all the time. And I can go and extrapolate from that time frame on case after case after case where we were surprised. Well, we get paid to deal with surprise, but my opinion is we ought to work hard to prevent as much as possible associated with it. You have a lot on your plate, and uh, this is something I'm very, very sensitive to, uh, particularly as you balance your professional life, you balance your family life, and, and all the various demands in order to get a ship ready for a deployment or aircraft squadron or a helicopter uh, component that joins a, a ship or submarine, what have you. And then along, which isn't on that slide, because uh, you know, I'm not an aviator, so I don't get that crew rest kind of thing uh, in the <laughs> submarine business. Uh, but rest has also got to be part of that, that business so that you're at your prime when you need to be at your prime associated with things, and you get this shopping list. One short sea story. When I was commanding officer USS Honolulu, uh, I would uh, call in the XO and the chief of the boat, and I would say, hey, uh, let's look at this POD plan, plan of the day that you had for uh, the next day or so as we were going to pull into one of the busier ports, Yokosuka, happened to go up Tokyo Wan or something. And I said, we can't do all this stuff. We need to be rested so that we're at our prime to surface this submarine in high traffic density and to be able to handle the elements like fog, rain, et cetera, while you're going uh, through uh, whatever tight situation that is. And so this slide is put up to remind you of that P thing, P being prioritization matters. Everything can't be an A item. So you gotta pick and choose uh, what's important. And sometimes you have to remind your boss that piece of prioritization because you'll have an XO banging on the table saying we got to do it all but we got to keep the balance of things uh, as important. One thing that clogs the arteries that I experience a lot is that one on the spoon called email. Everybody likes to send me an email and I say well, why do I need to look at this and I'll look at the subject line and I'll look at the first couple of lines and if I can't figure it out it's on to the next thing, because I just don't have time to go through that mechanism. But it's something that, that I think clogs our arteries sometimes with these electronic devices in the flow of things. Now, don't get me wrong. I love if I can Skype my family from Australia, for example. That's great. But it's amazing to me the kind of useless emails that clog the arteries. One of my favorite ones is the one that has about 10 other emails that you'd have to read if you really wanted to in order to figure out the essence. And I think, I said, well, how many people did that person send that email to? And now if I took the time it would take each one to go through all that versus if the sender had just put bottom line up front, here's what we're trying to work on, et cetera, and what you need, you can get that done, make a decision, move on. But anything other than that's clogging the arteries. Uh, so uh, don't do that. But think about that, particularly as you're passing it along. Oh, well, let me spam. Let me add 100 people to this CC list. Do they really need it? All right. This uh, slide here talks about what breeds the success. And I, I don't want to talk about all the items on there. But uh, quite frankly, I would tell you to think about that and read about it. I read, uh, well, let me stop and ask the question. You said make it interactive. What should you as a naval officer be reading every God-given day? Anybody, give me a topic, please. <laughs> no, I'm asking what do you read? What are you after to try to read every day? Okay, we got history, that's one of my pet peeves. Another? <laughs> okay, rules of the road, very important in our uh, business, and I capture that under broad category. Uh, news, sir. news. Mm, okay. Logs. Logs, yeah, you do a little log reading there. But I'm talking about books, you know, if you had the time to, which I hope you do, salami slice some time off, 
We talked about reading history, and then you mentioned rules of the road, news, and what have you. Now, you can be careful with news, because you can get blogged to death if you aren't careful. But I put that in the category of professional development. You know, what's going on in this world that's spinning, and then as a leader, am I reading a book periodically to ground me in all that stuff I got in the beginning of my Naval Academy experience, perhaps? and that that's uh, something to do uh, on a periodic basis. And then the third piece, I haven't heard yet, but how do you keep innovative? Well, you gotta read, in my opinion, something like science fiction, because that stretches your imagination and your horizon to uh, other approaches to problem solving. In some cases, not at all related to the, the problem of the day, but somewhere in there, the, the cranial power connects the dots and you come up with a solution that nobody else has thought of uh, because, boy, it looks far-fetched. Well, if you had looked at what looked far-fetched in our combat information centers today compared to what I looked at as a pup, big difference. And, and uh, you, you wouldn't have even envisioned these massive screens with gobs and gobs of fused information. The one, one here that I will bark at is developing a questioning attitude. I can't say enough about that. The why, why are we doing it this way, uh, what have you. I wouldn't be sitting before you here if I hadn't had astute sailors working for me in various jobs that came up at the right time and said, but engineer, but XO, but captain, is that the right thing to do right now? And you pause, you reflect it, and you said, hmm, let me think about that. Uh, let's slow down or let's take a different approach. But it's that, to me, part of teamwork. Sometimes, I, even at this level, I can go to forums and people are a bit stiff because it's like we're afraid to ask a question. And uh, I'll raise my four-star hand and say, I don't understand that acronym you have on that slide. Explain it. Then after the meeting is over, some group will come by and say, I'm glad you asked that question because the guy is talking about blah, 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 or I didn't understand it either. And I'm looking at him saying, well, why didn't you ask the question, you know? But people tend to get stiff in these things. I'm embarrassed if I ask the question, but yet I'm going to sit in this forum, suck up my valuable time, and not understand the material being presented. And I say, stop doing that. Don't take any prisoners when it comes to people putting goofy acronyms on on material and you know expecting you to know them all it's funny for me in the Navy world the joint world the political world they all got different acronyms and I'm not that smart so I tell them break it down make me understand it and then I can give a vote in something but time is an, a prized commodity and I would tell you very important all right I'm gonna get kicked out if I don't uh, continue here last slide I uh, can't talk enough about your leadership in this region for this uncertain future that we're in. Uh, whether you're working at the uh, strategic level, the operational level, tactical level, uh, this business is so darn important as you look at the complexities and the threats that exist in our world today in this region. And the laundry list is huge. So I thank you for your attention here. I thank you for hearing me out, and I'm really pleased to share the stage with such distinguished professors here. I'm a lightweight in comparison. Thank you.